Europe is a large, diverse and densely populated continent with a complex and interconnected electricity grid to match. And it's all going through a big change, the energy transition. As we strive to tackle climate change, the decarbonisation of our energy system is one of the most fundamental and challenging tasks. For this to be possible, we need two things on the ground. First, a massive increase in renewable energy production, such as solar panels and onshore and offshore wind turbines. Second, we need more grids to connect places where wind and solar are abundant with places where electricity is needed. To ensure that these large pieces of infrastructure don't cause problems for people and nature, any grid development must pass through careful planning and permitting processes, stringent regulations at EU and national level, as well as public consultations. This is a challenge, but good planning, broad collaboration and a transparent approach can mitigate negative effects and provide positive new opportunities for the local environment. Some of the most visible components of the energy transition are wind turbines and electricity pylons. Their sheer size makes them hard to ignore, and even more so when you're a bird who has to share the airspace with these giants. The fact of the matter is, when these are in the wrong place, they can kill birds and bats. But this doesn't have to be so. By using science and research to plan infrastructure away from bird migration routes, by visibly marking the lines, and by tapping into the knowledge of citizens about their local bird life, we can greatly reduce the impact on our avian friends. Putting power lines underground can also reduce hazards for birds. However, underground cables also have consequences for the environment. They require a considerable amount of construction work, which can damage wetlands and soil, as well as the habitats of ground nesting birds. To prevent this, collaborative planning, data sharing and further research are vital. Very often though, the impacts of overhead lines on nature are much easier to counter, via active corridor management for example. When you're walking through the countryside, you may come across breaks in the forest, which allow transmission lines to safely pass electricity across the landscape. To ensure there is no danger of a tree touching the line and causing a blackout, the vegetation in the area must be constantly managed. This technique can have surprisingly positive effects on a forest's biodiversity. Rather than clear cutting, by removing some vegetation and encouraging the growth of other trees and flowering plants, corridors can provide habitats for diverse species. Sowing meadows, restoring heathlands and peat bogs, and digging new ponds in these spaces make these green electricity corridors some of the most biodiverse areas around. Ilia has been a frontrunner with regard to green uh, corridor management. We already launched the pilot project 10 years ago and now we're rolling out the concept in the whole uh, of Belgium. The success of the project is really driven by uh, the support and the collaboration we developed with local NGOs, but certainly also by the positive feedback we got from citizens and municipalities. To deal with climate change, we need grid development. The grid corridors mean impacts on nature. We can minimize those impacts and what we've seen in Belgium is that by working together between TSOs and environmental NGOs we can go beyond that and capture the opportunity of creating habitats and restoring nature. For the energy transition to succeed, infrastructure must be built and the consequences of this are not taken lightly by developers. This is a learning process but by working together in a transparent and open way, sharing experiences and best practices, and with the right policies and support, we are continuing down the path to a decarbonized energy system, which works for humans and nature.